Right. Okay. So, since last time I spoke to you, it's been announced that Premier League Chief Executive Richard Scudamore is going to be leaving his position at the head of the company. And, you know, initial reactions? Yeah, fine. Sound, whatever. People move on from jobs. Eras and all that. Then you find out that he's going to be getting given a £5 million golden handshake for leaving. Thank you very much. Uh, please don't tell anyone where all the bodies are buried. Is £5 million. Okay, yeah, you can rationalise that because, look, we live in a world where we see what major CEOs of major blue chip companies make ridiculous sums of money. The kind of sums of money that, you know, the average person, we, we see those sums of money there. They're not even lottery wins, are they? They're kind of like, they're just ludicrous sums of money that we, they become unreal at that stage. The amount of zeros added to a number basically means that we can't really fathom it. So we probably turn a bit of a blind eye to it to, to some extent. So it's a bit weird because he gets paid very, very handsomely. I think it's something like 900,000 uh, basic salary a year, up to 2.5 million with bonuses, which I presume he's been getting because the Premier League has gone from strength to strength in terms of its uh, financial reach. But then you find out that that five million pound golden handshake is gonna be constructed of individual 250,000 pound payments from each of the Premier League's 20 clubs. Fuck off, fuck off. Fuck off, it's absolutely ridiculous. Genuinely ridiculous. Now look, if you were to pair this back to a level that I guess we'd, we'd all be able to relate to, and that's Sandra from accounting. She's leaving. She's been a dedicated servant to the, to the, to the office for 10 years, 20, whatever. And she's leaving and someone in the office says, right, we're going to have a little whip round for Sandra just to say thank you very much for all your diligent hard work. You know what you do? Yeah, maybe you slide a fiver into the cards or, you know, if she gave you first pick of the, the donuts or, you know, she's that, just that extra little cheeky smile as you walked in the morning. Maybe you'd slip a 20 in there or whatever. And maybe you would write a more personalised message in the card rather than like, ta-da, Sandra, and then sign your name. You know, maybe, maybe you'd do something a bit more heartfelt because you know how important she is and what, you know, what a great servant she's been. So fine, I, I get it. I get that there's something in that. The concept isn't totally ridiculous, but the fact that it comes from a football world makes it pretty bloody ridiculous. In addition to that, look, we've all seen that episode of Friends where Ross moves into the building um, and he doesn't want to chip in for the super who's leaving and then everyone shuts him out. So you don't want to be that club, which makes it doubly bad, I think, for the likes of Cardiff. Yeah, for the likes of Cardiff who are going, brilliant. £250,000 out of our house pocket for what? For fixing that problem last year when we were in the championship. Brilliant. Great idea. Absolutely spot on. Love it. Brilliant. Great. Yes. Let's, let's do that. Am I angry at Liverpool for uh, purportedly being one of the clubs that's supposedly agreed to this? Yeah. Yeah, I am. For a club that's gotten so much better at being engaged with its fan base, it's gotten so much better at being more like the people that are at the heart of the football club. Scousers, socialists, people who care about people, people who want to see the money that the club has spent in much more positive ways. Yeah, I'm annoyed that it's not gone like that because I think the look, I think if you took a vote of Liverpool fans, I think the vast, vast, vast majority of them would say, no, don't give him that money. If you've got that money to spend, spend it better. Spend it on different things. Spend it on things that we actually give a shit about. Spend it in the city rather than give it to a guy who's already loaded. Now, look, Richard Scudamore is 59 years old. He might not have a lot more work left in him. Um, and he's got five kids. Five miles to feet, which means basically he's a lunatic. Five kids, Richard, you're a fucking lunatic. I've got two and I am basically dead. Maybe having this much money is one of the reasons why you're allowed to have loads of kids. I don't know. I can't comment on that much. Um, but no, I'm, I am upset. At, I'm upset at Liverpool for a club that has done a lot of positive things. And they shouldn't be undone. It doesn't undo the positive things that Liverpool have done. But when you think about the lengths that we've had to go to to get some of those positive things done, it's like walking out on 77 minutes to, to, to protest increased ticket prices. That was an extreme length to go to. People thought Liverpool fans were crackers for trying to do that. Yes, they, you know, they did a brilliant thing in helping with the Sean Cox donations. Absolutely magnificent. It's a wonderful thing that Liverpool Football Club have done. But again, when you consider... 
I don't know. I think of Liverpool as an institution within this city. And if I was an institution within this city, and I'm not. And I, you know, I wish I was, but I'm not. If I had the kind of money available to me, and it's just me, for my love of football, not just me as a football fan with a love of playing football and kicking a round thing in a rectangular thing, I'd, I'd, I'd buy pitches. I'd invest in pitches. And look, the technology there's increased, you know, and, and there's, there are... There are kids in this city losing their football clubs at every level, at every age level, actually from kids up to, to adults, because they can't afford to run their football clubs, they can't afford sponsorship, they can't afford kits, they can't afford to play. And even when they can afford to play, they can't play on surfaces that are worthy of being played on. They can't actually get their games played. Because, look, when I was uh, 10, 11, whatever, playing local Sunday league in Liverpool, Walker's Field... Uh, playing on Shankly Fields, they're an absolute disgrace. The pitches were an absolute disgrace, and they've not been upgraded since I was a kid. And in addition to that, the technology's improved where look, 3G pitches are a thing. Buy some 3G pitches, Liverpool, invest in some 3G pitches. Now, I know your kids are probably all coming through the academies, and you're getting them before they even get to that stage. I don't know, for as a gesture of goodwill, I think a far better things to spend a quarter of a million pounds on than giving some rich fella some more money to be slightly more rich. Back in my day, artificial pitches were basically slab of concrete, a little bit of fur on top, and then a sprinkling of sand. Basically, what the bare minimum requirements for taking an entire layer of skin off, which I th I'm pretty sure they use as a, a method of torture in Guantanamo. Um, but that's what kids were used to playing on in my day. Now you can play on pitches that are suitable for actual, genuine, elite-level athletes to play on. Liverpool, make more of them. I am upset with Liverpool, but I actually don't think that the book should stop with Liverpool. The book has to stop, for me, with Richard Scudamore. So this is a message to Richard Scudamore, and he's never going to see this because he's got, you know, he's probably going to be going into his money vault Scrooge McDuck style and, and, and taking a and taking a dip in because I can only imagine that's what you do with the amount of money that a human being like that has. And he can have his five kids swimming around as well, sure. Why not? Probably with some sort of nanny or au pair to look after them because that's what you get when you've got loads of money. It feels a lot of you. Not better. Not better. Fine. Tired. The book has to stop with Scudamore. If he wants to leave a legacy, because look, look at how every newspaper in this country is reporting it. The major journalists, greed, disgraceful. Fans of every single local newspaper, every si a single family in the Premier League is up in arms about this. <sighs> now, I don't know. He gets to walk away from football. And if, if I got offered £5 million, I, I'd like to think that I'd be a much more magnanimous person. But I, I don't think any of us could ever truly know how we'd react to that situation. Because let's be honest, none of us are ever likely to be in that situation or have been in it to truly say... I did it, therefore there's my reaction, therefore here's me on my high horse, knowing that I gave my five million quid away. In your face, Scudamore, I'm a much better man than you. Richard Scudamore needs to step up and say, thank you very much for that wonderful gift from the Premier League. Here is my legacy, and my legacy is this. Thank you very much, Liverpool, for your 250,000. Thank you very much, Bournemouth, for your 250,000. Everton, Southampton, whatever. Have it back. Have it back. But I want you to invest in football infrastructure within your city, within your local community. And listen, I've got a bit of an ego, so I want you to name whatever you do the Richard Scudamore Centre for Liverpool, for Bournemouth or whatever. Look, fine. He probably won't say that. But if the clubs want to do that, fine. But do something. Richard Scudamore Day, where... Every kid, every football pitch within a city is free to play on for kids aged between 6 and 18. And on that free football day, then, you know, you get... These are things. Something that contributes positively towards the culture of football, as opposed to continuing what has been the culture of football established by the Premier League and the rich motherfuckers who helped to finance it of one of just greed and selfishness and making life more difficult and taking things away from what football is at its core. And at its core, it's a sport that anyone in the world can play. But if you want to play it at an elite level, you need to have elite level facilities or at the least 
playable facilities and support to make that happen. So if you want a greater England national team, if you want more homegrown talent, you've got a stop complaining. It's not Brexit's fault that we've got loads of foreigners. It's just that they're better at football than we are. They have, they've got Spain, 10 times the coaches. I'm plucking that figure out of the arse, but it's not far wrong. Masses more coaches, loads more support, loads more people getting into a better standard of football. So Richard Scudamore, you know what? You've done a great job for the Premier League, I'm sure. And for your paymass, it's brilliant. You know, you've made the turnover of the Premier League absolutely massive. You've helped to grow it from being massive to super massive, super level, super elite. TV deals coming out of your wazoo, whatever. But you know what? If you want to leave a lasting legacy, you've not got long left on this earth, mate. When people retire, you know what? Sometimes they go downhill pretty quickly. So you know what? You could be dead within five years, mate. So you know what? Leave a lasting legacy. Have them build a statue of you at every single one of these facilities. But you know what? Be a bigger man. Be a better man. And be better for football in this country don't be a greedy gobshite. Give the money back to local communities. Make football better. Make the lives of young people better. And you know what? Ultimately, like I say, don't be a gobshite. Yeah? Sound reasonable? I think it sounds reasonable. You think that's what Scudamore should do? And suggestions on how he should be donating the money or what that money could be most positively spent on. Let me know in the comment section underneath. That would be most appreciated. Um, drop a like on the video if you agree with the things. If you don't agree with the things, also drop a like. Um, because it's not my fault that you don't like the video. Um, Comment below. Subscribe to the channel. Very close to 60,000 subscribers. Uh, there's some Match Day vlogs that I've done recently. You can watch some of them as well. All, all good stuff. Hopefully. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks. Nice one. Ta-da.